Thank you for staying with us. Now let's talk about uh, this concerning reports of abductions in uh, Borno and in Kaduna State. Well, President Bola Tinubu has condemned the abduction of vulnerable victims, particularly uh, the case of the internally displaced persons in Borno State and the report of pupils uh, being abducted in Kaduna State. Recall that more than 260 pupils and teachers were kidnapped in Kaduna, while hundreds of IDPs were abducted by bandits. And this has now triggered national outrage as the president has directed uh, security and intelligence agencies to immediately rescue the victims and ensure that justice is served against the perpetrators of these abom abominable acts. Well, the president sympathizes with the families of the victims, assuring them that they would soon be reunited with their loved ones. And that's what we're talking about now. We have in the studio certified master anti-terrorism expert, Dixon Osaje, and uh, joining us via Zoom from the UK is uh, security expert Femi Aratoku Ali. Thank you very much, gentlemen, uh, for joining us on the program. Femi Aratoku, it's good to see you uh, again, good as well you. as uh, Dixon Osaje here. Let's begin in the studio. Uh, what are your thoughts on this um, incident? Uh, at a point, it was like we were enjoying some form of respite, and now there's this spike, especially with these two uh, recent ones. Oh, thank you very much. I think it's a devastating uh, uh, story, and um, sometimes we think maybe we're getting it right, and this guy strikes, you know. You know, terrorism, uh, most times, uh, it's an ideological-driven um, war, and uh, most of these guys, what they do, uh, they try to undermine uh, the government, they also try to, you know, send, uh, you know, a state of fear to the Nigerian public. And uh, if you look at this methodology of mass abduction, it's to first of all, you know, uh, put the Nigerian people in a state of fear, also gain publicity. Yeah. And uh, that was how Boko Haram gained publicity during the abduction of Chibo girls. And now it has repeated itself again, 287 human beings, not 287 cows or mm -hmm. not 287 goats. Yeah. And uh, how they managed to, you know, uh, take these guys into vehicles and move them within the Nigerian territorial space peacefully. I, I was, you know, putting some items in my hillocks some few days back. I know the time it takes me and my driver to put those items in the hillocks. Now, talking about 287 human beings. Uh, I wouldn't say the security agency has been compromised, but I would just want to say that um, we failed to oblige to the safe school declaration. Uh, luckily, uh, when the safe school declaration uh, was established in 2015 in Oslo, Norway, uh, Nigeria was a signatory to the Safe School Declaration. All what the Safe School Declaration is all about is to ensure that students, teachers, and the school environment is, uh, is, is fixed in a state of uh, peace. And uh, during conflict area, uh, nothing goes wrong. And uh, you need to put everything in place so that students will be able to acquire knowledge. After Norway hosted the incident, the next country was Spain, Argentina followed by Spain. Luckily, Nigeria was the first, fourth country in the world that hosted the Safe School Declaration mm -hmm. and the first country in Africa. That tells you that we are not adopting or implementing the guidelines of the Safe School Declaration. If we start implementing the guidelines of the Safe School Declaration, I think uh, the Nigerian school will be highly protected. So the president must call the Minister of Education to order and say, visit the Safe School Declaration. If you visit that declaration, look at the hotlines, then the Nigerian schools will be protected because if these guys are coming to the Nigerian schools, there should be a, a, a what's it called, a, a protection layer, for, layer protection in our schools. They do, shouldn't come to the school and just fetch our students so swiftly. <coughs> we need to also have bunkers in our secondary school or primary school, whereby when these guys are coming, they run into the bunkers, mm -hmm. then the military come for rescue mission, then the terrorists will labor in vain. So looking at, um, the, like you have mentioned, the safe school declaration, um, we, is it implementable, especially in um, situations where we have schools in rural areas and hard to reach areas of Nigeria? Is this highly implementable there? Yes, yeah, highly implementable. It's all about construction. Right. Uh, you know, uh, what's happening in uh, Ukraine now, if it happens in Nigeria, we'll all perish because uh, most of our architectural design, architectural design, uh, we can't find bunkers there, you know. I, I was speaking with a friend yesterday night. I said, if anything comes into Lagos, for example, God forbid, where are we going to run to? So we still, we, we, now, our, our, the design of our territorial space is not built for preparation of war, you know. We are taught that Russia will be invading Ukraine, their neighbors. 
but they were prepared for war. So every country must prepare for war, build bunkers where people will run into for safety so that security agency will come. It is implementable in the rural areas in the sense that uh, we need to carry out crime mapping. Where are the crime prone environments within the rural areas? Where are the uh, risk application within the rural areas? Then if we be able to carry out such crime mapping, nobody should just come and build a school and uh, leave it without uh, having an effective architectural design and protection uh, uh, design. If you don't have an effective protection design, our students will continue to live in a state of fear. Just imagine how uh, children going to school today in the Northeast we feel it. They'll be looking through the window, uh, believing that there is going to be uh, another attack. But for me, I appreciate the president's decision in giving the service chief a marching order. Tell them, if you don't bring back this student, I will fire all of you. If you, make, if you put uh, our service chief and security agents in a tense situation, they will go after these people. Is the marching order enough? Mm. Yeah, it's, it's enough because uh, these people are human beings. They, they, they are not as well trained as our security agents. All what they do is just that they capitalize on the vulnerability of right. our security agents. Right. Okay, let's uh, come over now to uh, Mr. Femi Aratu Kuale. Thanks uh, for hanging on. And um, like Dixon here said, there appears to be, of course, the Chibok um, you know, experience is if it's going to be 10 years. Uh, since that dastardly, dastardly event happened, uh, same number of um, you know hostages taken or there about school children, and now we are having yet another you know incident in a school, a primary and secondary school. What what uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, does it appear to you like we uh, you know have learned any lessons since Chibok? Um, thank you so much, but, um Bringing this topic on board with Mr. Dixon in the studio with you is a very good one. Because um, part of what he said, um, perhaps I'm going to counter it. And at the same time, part of what he said, yes, we have to implement them. But um, let us look at it from this angle. Yesterday was um, Mother's uh, Day. How do you think the mothers will be feeling yesterday and today? Now, this is a morning time for Nigeria, for mothers, for the northern governors, for all the governors, for even all the ministers, because this has clearly shown that a lot has been done, but it has not really yielded any good results. Having said that, State Declaration School, a lot of security personnel and um, experts have been talking about this, provide what we call these state commissioners for schools, and different kind of ideas have been given to the past governments. Perhaps it has not reached the table of the new president. So now that everything is now on his table, everything stops with him. So how he's going to implement it now depends on him. Are we going to be using the same ideas with the same style of police, military, or are we going to change our strategy is one thing we need to look into. Having said that, I have my reservation around 10 team members that I believe can actually work effectively to bring out a massive solution towards this abduction of more than or over 500 people in Nigeria within the space of 100 hours. Let us look at the Minister for Transportation, Minister for Communication, Minister for um, Health, Minister for Interior, and IG, the COS, the others, and the local vigilantes, and many more. If we are to say anything that has to go with them, how do they come in place? How are they going to form a formidable team to work together? Now depends on the president and now depends on the chief of staff. And not forgetting the NSC as well, I've got a job to do. But Mr. Dixon, I will need to correct you. The matching order given to the chief of army staff is not the right way to go. Because everything does not stop with the chief of army staff. Everything has got to chop to stop with the IGP. Why? Because they are the internal local security officers that we have in Nigeria, and this is where the IGP and the Ministry of Interior needs to work together. But Why? If, because if, if the a IG, lot of them if... will be moved, a lot of them will be moved from Nigerian neighboring countries to another neighboring countries. But so do you think the, the police have the personnel and the, the manpower to um, overrun terrorism? Are they strong enough? Well, I can assure you that they are strong enough if they put their budget to the right places and do the right thing they are meant to do, which is one key thing we've been shouting and crying for for a very long time. But have we seen that happen? 
No, we've not seen that happen. So even if we're talking about this new abduction we're talking about, mm -hmm. remember, so many abductions seem to have happened in February, January, last year, and many more. So are we now saying that how many matching orders are we going to give? So what are we doing right and what are we doing wrong? Most of all these people are rightly in within some areas that are not yet combed. So we need the Air Force officers to equally help us with area view and mapping survey so that all the groundworks can be done effectively and easily. But if we don't have all this done, then we are not going anywhere. All the imams and chiefs and the local authorities around these areas, the chairman, have got to be called into questioning what exactly is going on. The Commissioner for Education needs to be even called as well. What is really going on? Do you have a roadmap? for how you want to secure schools and students as well, not only within the secondary schools, but within our tertiary institution in general. But, sorry, please, in, in your line of thoughts now, do you actually think we have enough personnel? Because you see that um, every time, for instance, if a VIP is coming to TVC News or going on the road, there are a lot of policemen with those VIPs, leaving the remaining to handle a lot of Nigerians. And so if you're moving them to these villages, do you think that we have enough people, enough manpower to effectively tackle um, insurgency in those areas? You see, just like I said to you, we can't use, a, we can't use somebody from the south mm -hmm. to go govern somebody in the north area or the northern area in terms of this strategy we're talking about. This is why I said we have enough manpower, but we're not just recruiting this manpower to the right places for the right sources and for the right things that we want them to do. Rather, we seem to have neglected what the IGP said when it came into power with the present government that all police officers must be withdrawn from the VIPs. But today, what do we see? Mm -hmm. Enough and more than enough police officers are still with the VIPs. So what are we talking about? We are not yet serious. That is why criminals will use all these uh, loopholes to now invade us and to now make us look like the weakest link. We are not the weakest link. We are the strongest link, but they actually you know, just taking advantage of what we're not doing right, and they're trying to, you know, cash in on it. So to them, it is business. To us, it is a failure. Okay, let's come back to the studio. Uh, Dixon, um, all right, so you have said that um, with the president urging the security chiefs to, you know, do the needful in finding the captives and, of course, uh, you know, arresting the perpetrators ahead of prosecution. But there's also been the suggestion that these service, service chiefs should move to court now, the theater of war, that they should relocate to these areas and, you know, affirm their leadership in, in this regard. Will that help? No, that will not help, you know. Uh, when we talk about service chiefs, we're talking about all heads of our status of the security agents. Uh, the immigration in charge of our national borders. Uh, the customs are also uh, playing a role. Uh, because how uh, these arms and ammunition gets into the Nigerian territorial space is disturbing. Um, you know, when you imagine most of these guys that are carrying out these arms, that are holding these arms, and you, uh, you check them very well, you discover that they don't even have the financial uh, capacity to purchase an AK-47. So that tells you there's a political inclination to this, uh, 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 to this uh, war we're facing. Now, what is happening in Nigeria is a war situation. Uh, because when human life exceeds 999 being eliminated by criminal elements, it becomes a worse situation. And it's so disturbing that uh, we've not uh, seen this as a worse situation in our own uh, our territorial space. You see, sometimes uh, when you, uh, when the security agent don't do the right thing, uh, we tend to blame the government. You know, we are good in centralizing our problem. Uh, centralizing in the sense as if anything happens, uh, we blame the president. If anything happens, we blame the president. Most people would study, uh, take, take the line of thought that, uh, okay, these state governors don't have the powers to, you know, uh, give uh, security agents uh, uh, powers. And that's why sometimes we need to start looking at decentralizing our policing system so that to be able to, you know, go after these criminal act activities with uh, speed and momentum. Because when it comes to crime prevention, uh, we st should be looking at the area of uh, pursue. Uh, because uh, I was watching a film some few days ago, and a crime took place. What happened was that there was a, 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 an area pursuit and also a ground pursuit. Mm -hmm. So these guys were pursuing the criminals until the, 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 these guys were exhausted. So now, how will you come and carry out 287 Nigerians and there is no uh, pursuit? And you allow these guys to go to their government space, keep these guys, our children, in their own government space, and they, they excel. That is to say that they are capitalizing on our vulnerability. Mm -hmm. What is our vulnerability here? Because when we talk about vulnerability, we fail to understand that what is happening? What have you implemented? 
Now, what you implemented to that situation, does it help or is it helping? No, it isn't. So vulnerability is very vulnerability analysis is very important in, this, in, our, in our own situation because 2014, like Kemi rightly said, to, to, to date, is 10 years, and now it's as if it's an anniversary. Maybe it's a plan, something I don't know. But for me, what I will advise the federal government to do is that our security agent needs to come back to the drawing board. You know. Let me talk about a uh, policing system, uh, that the police are solely responsible for internal uh, security or whatever the case may be. But now we are in a terrorism, a terrorism state of war. And when, we, when you get to a terrorist state of war, you bring in the military, you understand? Even though they are solely responsible for protecting, our, uh, for protecting us from external aggression, Absolutely. you bring in the military to come and carry out this action. But the military are still not uh, able to, you know, You've mentioned, something about, you mentioned something about decentralizing the, the police system. So do you think community policing will be essential at this time? Uh, for me, yes, it will be essential. But we fail to understand that community policing is a philosophy. Uh, because uh, whatever the case may be, man, technology, and processes is going to be involved. Because when you talk about security, uh, it's not about man. It's not about uh, the, uh, the, the personnel. There are three processes to security management. We talk about technology. We talk about human being. There is the soldiers, officers, and men, and then we talk about processes in place. Okay, now, technology, uh, a human being, the chipbook, uh, the abduction, for instance, now, uh, let's talk about men. Now, what were the, uh, uh, you know, response mechanism from the officers and men? If that does not, if that fails, what about technology? Did you put in technology in place to chase these guys? If that fails, what are the processes in place? Because, for example, if an incident happened, what do you do? And... Uh, how do you chase these criminal elements to bring them back to justice? But it just seems that the three processes fails each time we suffer from speed of insecurity in Nigeria, and that is a blatant failure. That shouldn't happen. If technology fails, if human fails, technology should never fail. If technology fails, the processes in place to you know, uh, manage that situation, manage that incident, shouldn't fail. But here, the processes fail, the human factor fails, the technology fails. And then you ask, my, ask me, Dixon, what is the crime of this Nigerian student that were captured? I would say their crime is being a Nigerian. All right. Uh, Femi, so uh, what's your take now? Some are also <laughs> saying, uh, you know, there is speculation that these might be deliberate uh, uh, attempts now to destabilize uh, the, the president's to destabilize the, go the government of the day. What uh, merits do you find in this notion? Um, you see, thank you so much for the question you just asked me. Um, we don't need to start looking into analyzing issues this time around. All we need to be looking out for should be solutions and how do we make this solution a robust one. Like I mentioned before, a 10-man committee should be set up, which they have them already, I've talked about the Minister for Transportation, um, the um, Communication Minister, because those guys are actually using network, um, network um, devices. And then we need to look into the Ministry of Agriculture. The people being kidnapped obviously will be fed, no matter the situation. So what is the system around there? Who is watching who? Now, this is where the NURT, each time we talk on TVC, I keep mentioning that everything they've been doing in Nigerian security architecture, we failed to connect with the NURT because they seem to know most of all these routes that all these criminals are actually taking. They apply these routes more than any one of us. We need to bring them involved. Not forgetting, we still need to still speak to the finance minister to speak to the CBN. There is a strategy around what I'm saying, but due to security reasons, I'm not going to bring a whole lot on board. Why I mention IG, and uh, while I mention which I'm going to do, I uh, will speak one-on-one uh, -on -one if it's possible, or if it's still possible, speak to the PRO, Nigerian police um, PRO should be called upon. I could remember some years ago, we spoke about certain things. There are so many devices that should have been implemented and given to local security authorities. We shouldn't even be a thing we're talking about. Mr. Dixon rightly said technology. There are so many technology in place that will have helped. Where are the technology? This is where the security budget vote now comes in. Every year, year in, year out, we see our security <coughs> officers coming to Nigeria, I mean, coming to UK, America, and all the rest for security forum and security seminars. They see loads of devices. Why are they not buying them or why are they not investing into them? So that at least it will help us to really tackle the security problem, problem we have in Nigeria. Those that have been captured, for all these kind of atrocities, 
in what way and manner have we actually prosecuted them to send a strong message to criminal activities that there is no room for all these kind of things to happen in our country. We are here to tackle all this. Until we keep tackling all this, we have nowhere to go. Don't let us forget all these people being kidnapped today or some few days ago, we definitely have some kind of underlying health issues. This is where the Minister for Health now comes in to speak to NAVDAC and all these drug law enforcement agencies because medication will be moving around one way or the other. What are they gonna do about all this? So they have a lot to do. A lot they need to do is actually on their table. The budget is there for them. Do not let us even point accusing fingers this time around to the president. It's got nothing to do with him. This is something that's been happening over time, over time, and we seem not to get it right. This is now the high time to now say, you know what? Let us go for a different strategy. Who are those that we think can actually have an idea into how to mitigate all the stress we have in the country today? It is not just about local policing or state policing or this or that. Until we get the primary foundation of what security is all about very right, we might end up losing all these children being kidnapped, just like Mr. Dixon said, their fault is because they are Nigerians, and our fault is because we failed to provide the real services, which is protection of lives for them. Mm -hmm. So now they are pro they are, the problem now is this. We will be speaking to the family members. We will be speaking to the family members. What is the fate? Every single minute counts as we speak. What is going to happen to almost 500 of them? Don't forget, majority of them might actually be females, students, and all the rest. What will be happening to them? What sort of trauma would they be going into? These are the kind of things I want Nigerians to please look into. And don't just fold hands. Let us join hands together and look for a possible way out. We're talking about the north. We're not yet talking about the south and the east and the west. Anything can still happen around these places. This is why we need more than enough manpower, more than enough resources, more than enough investment and security awareness to go around. Please, if it's possible, let the Mr. President withdraw permanently all security moving around with VIPs. This is the time we need them on ground to do the real job they are meant to do, not to follow VIPs around. We have the CPOs, which are privates, that can do all this. Allow them to do their job effectively so that Nigeria can be a safe place. At the all moment, right. no investor can come in into Nigeria to come and invest if stories like this are flying around. All right. Uh, well, Dixon, in terms of, you know, partnering, partnership, uh, the... Uh, Western world has also spoken on this latest um, you know, development, just as uh, there was global outrage for the Chibok incident. For our immediate neighbors uh, in West Africa especially, what do you make of the current relationships in combating insurgency of this nature and what you feel can be done to uh, improve uh, the, the partnership? Fantastic question, Kemi. You know, in terrorism management, if there is no cooperation, I don't think uh, you'll just be fighting uh, within the surface. Uh, we've established a lot of uh, uh, national and uh, international uh, partnership with the Niger, Chad Republic, and, the, and other parts of, of, of the country. But it seems not uh, to be working because uh, terrorism, uh, there are various formations of terrorism. We have the domestic terrorism, we have the international terrorism, and we have the transnational terrorism. You know, somebody leaving his country to come and commit crime in Nigeria and going back to his country, or somebody leaving Nigeria to go and commit a ter terrorist act and going back uh, to his own uh, country. You know, now we need to understand one thing here is that uh, in crime prevention, uh, you, you don't need to start looking at what you're going to bring together. You need to be prepared. In crime prevention, you need to understand from the triangle of crime, uh, what is the motive of the offender, the motive of the offender. You check uh, the opportunity because criminals need opportunity to strike because your vulnerability is the criminal's opportunity. So the vulnerability of the Nigerian states is always a criminal's opportunity. Then uh, you look at the, uh, 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 the, the, the target, which are these students right now. So what we start, need to start looking at as a country we should start cutting off this criminal opportunity. And that is where I will uh, advise the government to start looking at demobilization, uh, uh, the, uh, the resourcing these criminals. Because uh, if you don't de-resource, you will fight these guys till eternity. Now, let's be clear. Crime will live with us till eternity. But the whole essence of crime prevention is to mitigate it. But here, we try to mitigate it, it, it goes up. We mitigate it, it goes up. So the resource is very important. After the Nigerian Biafra war, we understand what play right that brought that war to end. So the resource in this criminal is very important. I've been, de been delinking, I've, I've been delinked them, demobilized them, you the resource. Where are they getting their resources from? During the NSAS, the CBN were very swift in bringing out sponsors of NSAS. Mm -hmm. Where are the sponsors of these guys? Because if you don't get the sponsors of these guys, we will keep on 
You know, you just keep on killing these guys. You, you kill the recruits. You kill the recruits. You kill the recruits. That is the, the same here. So let's look for the sponsors. Dubai, some few months years ago, uh, uh, you know, uh, sent out some list of sponsors of terrorism. Let's look at sponsors of terrorism. Then the banking system needs to play because uh, terrorism financing uh, is one big role. Like this abduction now, one of the major uh, objectives of this mass abduction is for funding. They need funds. And that's when they, the motive. Yeah, that's the motive for mass abduction. One of the, it's one of the motives for mass abduction. And when they get these funds, the Nigerian territorial space will be in a big risk because they use these funds to sponsor most of their brothers in the other part of the world that are into terrorism business. And they use these funds to get arms and ammunition because these arms and ammunition they're using, they need to get more rounds, they need to get more anti-aircraft and more arms and um, uh, other uh, uh, terrorism uh, equipment. So we need to start looking at de-resourcing this criminal act, this criminal element. And I appreciate this government in fighting this um, uh, Burundi change issue because this Burundi change is also playing a big role in uh, uh, terrorism because you can't trace the movement of uh, funds uh, that are being uh, you know, uh, uh, used in these criminal activities. So it's a disturbing situation, but what we need to do right is that all hands needs to be on deck from the political angle. We need to look at it from political angle and also from the military perspective. If we don't look at it from both perspective, the military will fight till eternity. So what's the place of border security? Because it's been said that we had we have over a thousand porous borders in Nigeria. What's the place of border security in tackling Insurgency. Yeah, that is the governed space. Uh, you know, like when I was in the Bakasi Peninsula uh, in 1999, I, we were in a, in a zone. Somebody came to tell us that, hey, some people are smuggling uh, uh, illegal uh, uh, things by, they just pointed a route for us. And for two years, we were there. We never knew there was an illegal route. Mm -hmm. So the place of border security is very right. important because the government needs to, you know, Cut off that area. And that's why we need to improve the strength of our immigration service because they don't have the capability and capacity to contain with these criminal elements within the borderline right. and project more technology in our borderline. Nigerian space will be safe. Right. Femi Aratokunale, final words from you, especially with uh, you know, the, the name of Ansaro being peddled as um, uh, the group behind this uh, attack. Well, um, thank you so much. It's, it's always a good thing for a certain group to come out and, you know, claim responsibility for the um, devilish acts they've taken upon themselves. That's fine. Yes, we know them now. And what the government should be doing right now is trace out, just like Mr. Dixon said, who are funding them. Obviously, if you look at the state of who these guys are in media pictures and what we've seen so far, you can tell that they can't even boast of, you know, funding just ordinary bullet, let alone an AK-47. So the question is, where is the funding coming from? This is where the CBN, the finance minister, and the interior minister, a whole lot of them needs to work together. And don't forget the local chief, the imam, uh, and the, the local priests around there must work together with the Nigerian government if they want a safer community. If not so, then we might probably end up back in the studio and be talking about another new abduction. Mm -hmm. Who knows? There might be one coming up today. Who knows? There might be one coming up next week. Who knows? There might be more to come. Maybe this is just a test to see how we're going to respond. Right. So we have a long way to go, and I hope things work better for us in Nigeria. All right. Femi Aratukwale, as well as Dixon Osage in the studio, we thank you both very much for your contributions this morning. Thank you for having us, and thank, thank you for you. watching.